WBLS, just Nick, one-on-one right now with the Tyrese, R&B singer, songwriter, actor, phenomenal actor at that. Let me just tell you. Thank you. You're an amazing actor. Obviously, it shows. So, what's going on with you? Because I hear there's a new project about to drop. And well, first of all, I just want to tell you congratulations. Thank you. You know, it's a program director from a hip hop station and coming out here to New York. And now you're doing your thing at, at WBLS. I just want to give you your flowers and tell you thank you for all that you mean to the culture. You know, um, I tell people all the time in radio or journalists that write stories and articles about people, movies, reviews, albums, or just stories. I say, you know, after you do something for 10 or 15 years, most people actually lose touch with how effective or impactful their words are. Mm. You know, you could actually have all your listeners who tune in every day because they love you, and when they hear you get excited about a song, they get excited about a song. Facts. If it was introduced any other way, it could be landing different. Fast. So for all of the lives and careers that you've affected from just putting your energy and your stamp on it, praise God for you. Praise God. I love that. Thank you. You're Thank very you. welcome. Let's put the focus back on you. you know See, that's saying? uncomfortable. The focus is on you. You want to put it back on me. Yes, because you have accomplished so much. <laughs> and I'm excited about this new project, but I want to talk about the single first because, one, it sounds very classic, right? But then when I listen to it, don't think you ever love me. Sounds like some pain. So you've been through some things, obviously. Yeah. Ooh, this face you're giving me right now. Um, well, I didn't go to media training. I haven't figured out how to express my feelings into a sound bite. I haven't figured out how to put a filter on it, how to cut and paste it. It's my truth. I was with a woman named Samantha for five years. We got married. We had a one-year-old beautiful child named Soraya. And she just left me out the blue. And, uh, and never came back. And I never cheated. No physical domestic violence. No side chick. Um, no infidelity. Nothing. No going through my phone and seeing something was going on. Nothing. As a matter of fact, it ain't funny, but the running joke is the only other woman I kissed in five years was Naomi Harris' forehead in the movie Black mm. and Blue. Didn't even get no lips out of it, you know? <laughs> so you don't think she ever loved you? I don't think she ever loved me. Because if she did, it wouldn't be that easy to leave. Mm. So, I wish this was somebody else's song, but it's mine. I wish this was somebody else's album. Beautiful Pain, it's a double album. The whole album is live. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to be singing about no shit like this you know but I love what I do when it comes to music I respect life I respect the highs and the lows of life so many people want to pop champagne their whole life and when it comes to those peaks and valleys uh you know most people will blow their heads off you know I lost my mom on Valentine's Day last year my Can father died sense. the same year my ex-wife now filed for divorce and don't love me enough to explain to me why. I got a one-year-old who's now being raised under two different roofs when my whole goal was to break that generational curse uh, of so many divorces in my family. Um, and I'm not playing victim, you know. I'm not going to sit there. I'm not gaslighting. I'm not bashing this woman. I'm just telling my truth, you know. I don't know what she was in it for. I don't know what the agenda was. I don't know if but it was about... she never complained that said what the issue was with her? The last complaint that I heard from her before it was over was after me working three, four weeks on two different music videos, which one of them starred her as my leading lady. Right. Black Excellence. Google it. Black Excellence featuring Rick Ross. 
she was the leading lady in the video. And then I did another video with CeeLo Green called Legendary. Yes. Uh, dedicated to Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, Eric Garner, and Trayvon Martin. And after working day and night, wall to wall, casting, location, scouting, writing, directing, recording, and doing everything that was needed, um, I ran into Samantha in the kitchen one night, and she asked me, are you not attracted to me anymore? Mm. And I said, I said, what the f are you talking about? What's, what's going on? She's like, I'm just asking, are you not attracted to me? I said, babe, we just did 10 full months in quarantine. Laughter, jokes, movie night, date night, sex was flying. I've never not traveled, been on calls, meetings, and anything ever in my life. I gave you two, 10 full months, and while quarantine was a negative, it became a positive for us. It helped us to hit the reset button around our marriage. Are you looking to file for divorce? You're going you're gonna to divorce Denzel because he's in character for a movie? You're going to divorce LeBron James because he wakes up at 4 a.m. to go to practice? You knew exactly who I was before we got together. You know I'm a singer. I'm an actor. You know I'm an artist. You know I'm committed to my how are you processing this as you're so focused on your career, I don't matter? How did you how did you get to that to even say, are you not attracted to me anymore? So well, then she left me. Things, though. She left me. It didn't sound like a time issue because she wanted to know if you were attracted to her. So were you doing things after the fact that made her feel like she was wanted by you? If you water the grass for 10, 4 months and every box in and around showing your wife how much you love her and how much you are attracted to her and how much you desire her, every aspect of her. How does that all go away in three weeks after 10 full months? So I don't really know if that has anything to do with me. You feel like there was so something else going Something on. else. And, you know, like I said, you know, my mom taught me rest in peace that when somebody's looking for an out, they're going to find it. Mm. Well, the album's called Beautiful Pain. So obviously you see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? What does that, that's, naming that mean to you? That's not the right context. Well, uh, well I don't it's Beautiful see the Pain. Light. It's an oxymoron. So why name it that? So Beautiful Pain is there's a lot of beauty in pain if you allow yourself to discover it. See, I'm not focused on the song. I'm not focused on the album. Um, I'm like right now, I'm like sitting in the audience right now watching all of this play out. And whoever the Tyrese guy is, he's on stage. I'm out here with y'all, with everybody else. Because I haven't even allowed myself to embrace or accept any of the success or anything that's happening. Because I'm still, you know, triggered and, and traumatized over what happened. Now... I'm in a new relationship. I've been with my girl now for two years, and she's incredible. Uh, she's sweet. She's kind. Probably the most patient and nurturing woman God could have ever sent me because there's nothing more uncomfortable than getting in a relationship with someone while they're in the middle of a departure from their, their ex. That's what I was going to ask you. Have yeah. you healed? Um, no, but I'm, 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 I haven't healed like all the way. So why but not be single first? That's not my choice. Elaborate. What do you mean? Well, it's not meant for everybody to be alone after a painful, depressing breakup. Because that's how people kill themselves. Hmm. Some people go into a state of depression and they never get out of it because they want to isolate and say, until I get all my shit together, I don't even want to give love a shot. I think love can help you to love again if you allow yourself. So I think, you know, I think that's a tradition that a whole lot of women I find could find themselves sticking to. I know niggas is like, oh, niggas, soon we break up, we in the club, we out. That wasn't my approach. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I was so traumatized and shook and, and confused that I did not need to be alone. And I also didn't need to be in no clubs. I didn't need to be some old ass man out you know, snatching booty off the pole and just bringing random chicks to my crib because the game is open again, you know? So 
I met this woman. We both faithful to each other. We've been together for two years. Yesterday was our second year anniversary. And Congrats. Thank you. And, you know, Zelly never asked to be here. I was a very married man with a very married woman, and we was living our life as she was living hers. So I just thank God for all of the laughter, all of the vibe, all the intimacy, all the jokes, all the, you know, popping pimples on my face mm -hmm. and, you know, rubbing me down in the bathtub and cooking for me and saying, baby, let's watch a movie. Like, everything that she bring and has brought into my life was never there before she got here. And so the choice to say, have you healed? Stay alone until you've healed. I ain't f with none of that. I'm in therapy. Okay, there you go. Okay. I'm in therapy. Me and my girl is in therapy. And we just out living our life. I'm not a walking, living time bomb. And she ain't either. But she was fresh out of a situation just like me. So I think the love that we brought into each other's life and the timing mm -hmm. couldn't be better. Hmm. Well, so I'm glad you is, said the she, therapy she part. She is a part of the beauty of my pain. Because what it made me wonder is if in this new relationship you have hesitations. Because most people, after they get hurt like that, they don't want to move forward. They're yeah. too scared because they're like, well, what's your motives? So you obviously didn't have that feeling about your new partner. Um, well, I mean, she ain't going to get she ain't got nothing coming. I'm too smart to just give it all away. I mean. Yeah, but can you give yourself fully knowing that? Can I give myself fully? To her fully. Woman? I'm giving her more than I, I could. I'm giving her more than I could even imagine that I would ever be willing to give or capable of giving mm. to anybody while I was in all that I'm in. And I'm better for it. You know, the choice to say divorce heartbreak, separation, courts, kids, stay at home, be by yourself, and you end up being solid for 20, 30 years, that's bull****. That's not my choice. One year goes by, you celebrate. Two years go by, you know, I'm rededicating my life to Jesus and, you know, letting him lead my life, and I'm going to church, and I'm spending all these time with all these other single women, and we just sitting around bashing me and all. That ain't my choice, man. I love to love. Mm. I so you want to settle down? I love to love. I love the way it feels to be loved. I love to love. I love all of the complexities of all things that come with love. And my choice, no different than whatever choice you may make for you. Don't despise anybody because they're doing something that you wouldn't choose to do for you. I think if we had love staring at us in our face and we had butterflies that were feeling in our stomach... That would be fucked up to just decide to not give it a chance when it could make your life better. Mm. I mean, you're going home to a poodle and a vibrator. That's cool. That ain't a man. Well, see, that sparks a debate for me because I don't think you should go off butterflies. I think it's false, a false reality. I disagree. That's mm. your stomach. Yeah. We could agree to disagree. No, no. I'm, I'm just letting you know that whatever you may have to say yeah. about your process and your feelings... That's your reality. And, and it's I don't, okay. my opinion is not an opinion that anyone should like, love, or agree with. I'm just making people aware of my perspective. And I want people to consider, yes. not a bully, consider what I'm saying because it worked for me. I'm able to tell you that after my recent heartbreak, I didn't think it would, po it would be possible to like or love or ever allow myself to be liked or loved, ever. Mm. And then, then came God. He said, I'm going to send you exactly what I know you need. I don't have a mother anymore, so he sends me Kim Burrell. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that your heart desires, when you have an intimate relationship with Christ, you're not looking for people to agree. It's my, it's my pain. It's my story. It's my process. Mine ain't got nothing to do with yours. Yeah. I don't know what that man did to you. I probably couldn't even give you no advice about what you and your man had to survive or what you went through. I'm not going to grab nothing out of the sky. Some people go through things that other people just can't relate to. So to say this is what I would do and I would never do that, uh-uh, I don't know. That's you projecting. That's gaslighting in itself. Projecting your thoughts 
vision and, and your intentionalities or your process off onto somebody else, somebody can go through a nasty breakup and say, man, I was so fucking sad and depressed. I ended up picking up a book I ain't picked up in, since high school. I went back to a lake that my husband used to, hey, every time I told him I used to read a book, sitting at that bench at this lake, feeding the ducks, this nigga used to think I was crazy, clown me, he made me feel like but it used to bring me peace. And he stopped me from going to feed the ducks and read the book. And now that we broke up, I'm going back to read that book and feed the ducks sitting on that same bench and I couldn't be happier. Mm. You think I want to go sit on a bench and, and feed some ducks? No. But how can I disrespect you and your happiness? How can I make you feel bad about something that's giving you? Here's the key word. How can I disrespect something that's giving you oxygen? So what do you love to do? What makes you happy? I'm asking you. Me? You the person, not the on-air person. Not. I'm asking you. What do you do that makes you happy? Well, there's a few things. Being with my family. Uh-huh. Um, I have custody of my niece. Mm -hmm. She's seven. Her Beautiful. mother died to an overdose, so I stepped in. Praise to God. Her. Um, and just walking in my purpose, which I feel like is to motivate people, you mm -hmm. know? I could sit here and do interviews and talk about all the negative things that happen in people's life, but I choose to talk about the growth. Mm. So that's, I like walking in my purpose. That makes me happy. That's what makes you happy. Yeah. That's what gives you oxygen. Yeah. Now, you know how bored that could sound to For somebody? For a lot of people, yeah. Right? So again, when you're in tune with your likes, your dislikes, your comfort, your discomfort, what gives you oxygen? the type of places you want to go, the type of things and people you want to be around, type of conversations that you want to have. I ain't talking about that. You, you go do a three-hour lunch or a dinner with somebody who ain't talking about nothing that's got to do with nothing vibrationally for you, you'll leave that dinner and go, man, give me my three hours back. But to leave the dinner a different person than you showed up as, that's the goal. Well, let me ask you, because you dealt with the breakup. Yeah. And most people have a hard time forgiving. Mm-hmm. Have you forgiven? No. I'm not there yet. Mm. I will get there. Um, and my process for giving is not biblical. Is it right. ego? No. It's called pain. And I'm feeling it. But and I'm it still... Ego that won't allow you to forget. No. If it was, I'd tell you. I'd tell you right now. My ego and my pride of her just leaving me and I'm Tyrese and I'm worth this and that. I can't forgive her because who, who she thinks she is to leave. That's not it. That's not how I feel. Those are not my feelings. Um, I have not forgiven her because I just can't really process what happened. And, and I think um, I want to describe this, and it's just an analogy for the mature and smart folks. There is a very big difference in dealing with the death of someone who has cancer and they're in chemotherapy. It came back, it went away, came back, it went away, and at a certain point they transition. That death is the same death that you will be crying about versus a tragedy, a death that happened out the blue that people can't even explain. Mm. That type of death takes a much longer to process and heal and recover from yes. than the one that you've seen as a slow, slowly but surely transition happen. But your mind was prepared for the day that you're going to get the call mm. that it's over. But to wake up on a Wednesday and say, I was just on the phone with him on Tuesday, and then all of a sudden, you're Paul Walker and you die in the car crash? You can't process that shit. I agree. You can't process it. So I just need everybody to allow me some grace, no different than what you should ask God to allow you and say, look, man, your process is your process. They are grown ass men with full beards and voices deeper than mine who are still not over them being sexually assaulted when they were seven. 
And a trigger isn't a trigger if it doesn't exist. You triggered by what exactly? Oh, I'm not, I'm not triggered because I'm, the trigger doesn't exist. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm not traumatized and losing any sleep over being molested or sexually assaulted or growing up in the foster care system or being raised by crackheads and alcoholism and crips and bloods and gangsters and the homies being in and out of jail and police and excessive force and murder. I'm not traumatized and f over none of that. I got immune to it. I got used to it. I grew up in and around in my whole life. Oh, that's nothing. Social media has helped us all to get more immune to death because you got people that will film somebody getting f over mm -hmm. stepping in to help because they would much rather go viral than to help somebody out. So we all got a process. And my process is I love me. I love her. I love the child that we created, but I don't want her back. She's already shown me where she's at with it. Just maybe there was a timeline that she had in her mind that unfortunately she never shared with me. I'm gonna do this for five years and I'm out. Mm. I wish you'd have made me aware of that. Mm. But I'm in a relationship right now with Zelly. And this is my joy, this is my baby. We was just hightailing, running through the airport this morning to get on a 6 a.m. flight. And then I'm wiping the sweat off her forehead, sitting there first. And I said, you're my best friend. And I, I just praise God for you. And there's people that say she's a rebound. She's a mistress. He's just with her till he get his wife back. They said, uh, what else they said? They said, he's loving her and doing all this special shit for her, despite Sam. Uh... Are you saying that I'm doing a bunch of amazing things for a person that wasn't supposed to be here? Mm. I, I, I'm trying to understand. For the people in the comments, are you saying to me that all of this beautiful, magical stuff in these moments that I'm having with Zelly, I'm doing it despite Sam when Sam is the one who left me? Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. So, okay, we just going. So we just out here talking shit. Talking shit while I was with Sam. Then Sam left me and now I got a new girl. Now you're talking shit about my girl. And Zelly was out living her best life. There was Tyrese Gibson and Samantha Gibson and Soraya Gibson. We was good. So I thought. Well, did you learn anything from the past relationship that you think you could bring into this new relationship with Zelly? No. For example... Because I, I recently had a horrible breakup. It's probably my worst breakup ever. This was maybe going on three years now. And what I learned was that I allowed it. I would say that we have similar situations because I felt like I gave everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then in the end, I ended up getting cheated on. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I didn't really have closure as to why, which most people, that's why they suffer yeah. with the breakup. It's yeah. just, well, what did I do? Pulling out the you... human calculator, trying yeah. to add it all up. It makes yeah. you question yourself. But mm -hmm. then after healing and taking some time, it was the first time I was ever single because I'm normally in relationships back to back to back. I realized that it, I was triggered because it reminded me of me being adopted and how I felt abandonment issues. Mm -hmm. And so when you, people who go through abandonment issues, they actually cling to people. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and they allow things. Mm -hmm. She reminded me of my mother and my mother leaving me. Mm -hmm. um, he reminded me of, you know, my dad who was never there. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of those people have those situations mm -hmm. where you feel like, do you feel like you had a moment where you can say, okay, I realize where this came from with my possible childhood trauma or was it just? Um, no, I mean, everything you just said is very inspirational. Um, and I'm so glad you spoke on it. I really appreciate you sharing, honestly. Um, but again, I, I, I can honestly say, I'm gonna go back to your story and your stuff and your process and your childhood and your relationships, whether they lasted or didn't last. You know, what I often say to God, who's my homeboy, 
right? And I say, God, I don't like it, but whatever I was supposed to learn from it that can make me a better man, you know, can you just, can you, can you reveal that to me? You know, because I don't think anybody who loves themselves will wake up and go, okay, look, man, if you step over there, you're going to get your legs blown off. And then you go over there, your legs get blown off. And they said, man, I told you. And they said, look, you got your legs blown off once. I hope you learned your lesson. But if you go over here, you're going to get your legs blown off again. See, that's not me. Um, at the same time, again, I'm not playing victim. I'm far from perfect. I mean, I'm an alpha male. I'm very strong, very articulate. I'm very specific. And I'm very aggressive just in general, um, which is a part of why I'm successful which is a part of why I'm still here and been on for this long. And so I think what happens is, even in your case, people are attracted to the power, and then they come in with this agenda to break you or make you and get you to become something that they have in mind to then realize that you're going to still do you while being in a relationship with them and their mission in a very sick way, I'm going to change her. I'm going to get her to stop hosting so many parties and running around and doing so much. All she needs is a real man to love on her. I need to slow her down. And so, so you're attracted to the power. To now you're trying to change me. And... So, so now you're threatened by the power. You're threatened by the rooms I'm moving in, the people I know, and the text messages. Who that? And what he calling you this late for? Oh, that's the program director from the station who wanted to tell me about something they're trying to do tomorrow morning. I'm just saying, like, it's late. Like, you did know who you got with, right? So um, I, think, I think a lot of that, and again, we can make this about singer, celebrity, actor, but I'm making it about you as a, as a hard-working woman, on-air personality, jumping from multiple cities as the opportunities present itself. You got to have a certain type of man, just like I got to have a certain type of woman to understand that miracles can't be scheduled. The breakthroughs aren't scheduled. You can pray for a breakthrough. It could be a year, two years, three years. Father God, please, I, I just want this breakthrough. I want this so bad. God will do it, but he don't give you the heads up as to when. And if you don't have somebody standing in your corner and by your side that will say whatever it is, whenever it is, when God delivers on something that you want or you desire, I'm not going to make you feel bad about it. Where are we going? What city, what state, what country? I'm right there with you. That doesn't make him a groupie. doesn't make him a yes man or a yes woman. It just means that God sent you your better half to be as spontaneous and impulsive as you want to be to go get that. Now, if you want to work with FedEx and you know what time you're going to leave the house, pack a lunch, put on his uniform, you got about 15, 20 deliveries, and he's normally home by 730, go find that. He's right there. Some women love routine. Mm -hmm. And anything about breaking up the routine it gives them anxiety. It's too much. Where are we going? I, I needed more time to. That's what women have to kind of deal with when we are thinking about our relationships. Because, I mean, it's just as hard for us, too, oh, trying absolutely. to decide it's what's important. Harder. Yeah. It's harder for women. I'm glad you noticed that. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm well aware of it. There is nothing more threatening and intimidating, sadly, even to this day, than to have uh, a woman to be the breadwinner. Um, the quote unquote head of the house is paying all the bills, um, and everything that she has and everything she's earned, she's done the work, you know? Um, but us as men, we could find ourselves feeling emasculated, right? Because rather a woman does it or not, and I'm not going to generalize and say all women, but rather a woman knows it or not, there's a certain energy and a certain tone and a certain quote-unquote belittling energy that could happen mm. when a man is completely vulnerable and depending on you because you are in a place right now where things are going better for you than versus for them. But what I can say is 
most of the real women, and I say real, I don't say that loosely. Most of the real women I know, their actual gift is nurturing, pouring into, mm. and knowing how to take a man and all of his broke his piece, broken pieces, whatever that might be, helping him to reassemble it all and get him on his way. And there's also a specific gift, and I hope women are listening to this because I'm not trying to offend anybody. I'm trying to just have y'all to listen and say, ah, oh, you know, I never thought about it. I want you to receive it, not shut it down. There is a way, there is a way for you to be the breadwinner and pay all the bills, got the kids in private school, you got the six-figure, seven-figure job, you the CEO, you got staff, employees, you the boss. There is a way for a woman to still be very in tune with her femininity and her magic and all things woman. I'm listening. Story of my comes, life right now. When it comes to that man. Okay. See, if you are in a relationship with a lawyer, you almost got to give the lawyer, the female attorney, whose job every day is to think aggressive and be aggressive and try and win every case imaginable by pointing her picture. How does she get in her car after a long day, being on her feet, staying up all night, prepping for the trial, looking at all the inconsistencies in the documents and everything that that female law firm owner has to go through? And how does she get in her car after a long day in trial and still smell the perfume? Mm. Still go get her nails done. Still say, that's what I wore in the courtroom. I'm on my way home to my man. And I want my man to be the escapism away from this aggressive headspace. See, see, there's a song, a very famous song that we all love from James Brown. This is a man's world. This is a man's world. And songs like that were a game changer. But it also created a certain insecurity towards women. Because if it's a man's world, then where do I fit in? And so a lot of time women feel the need to become more masculine and to be more alpha in order for them to survive in this quote unquote man's world. But I have the greatest utmost respect for women mm -hmm. that are every bit of alpha, savage business women. They know they value, they got all the confidence and the swag and the energy, multiple degrees on the wall, they educated, they not out twerking trying to get it, not on OnlyFans and, and trying to get it the quick way, even though if they only OnlyFans, go get it especially if you can flip that money and turn it into another business. Get it how you're going to get it. I don't despise nobody's choice or their approach or process. But to be a pit bull in a skirt and still be in tune with your femininity and understand the light switch. Okay, I'm headed home to my man, and I'm going to pull it together. I'm going to get out of this that I've been on all day. When I walk in that front door, Light switch. And I'm going to fall so, back in. And even if you are aggressive when you get home, your man should love you enough to see that. And say, I know exactly what to do to get my girl out of that zone mm. into the zone that I need her to be in. That's key. And speaking on behalf of an alpha female. Yeah. And I think men get this misconstrued because it's not like we want to be alphas, Right. But if I'm with a man and he wants to lead, I want to trust that you will lead me the right way. And so when we feel like we're with someone who may not be, you know, need to step, may need to step up their game, we Gotta will step ahead pants. of him because at the end of the day, stuff has to get done. Yeah. So, so which, which is a saying that an alpha woman that's very aggressive – ambitious or overly ambitious, whatever they want to ping y'all to, that opportunity to become girly and femininity and smell the perfume and like, do you know, when I give you these roses, do you actually see them? Do you smell them? Are you allowing yourself the moment? And I'm not putting women in the box. Not, not everybody's into perfume. 
and all the girly stuff. But for me, I just have an appreciation yeah. for a woman who still wants to do her hair and makeup and do the manicures and pedicures and, you know, make sure that the shoes and the purse and the handbag is matching and, you know, making sure that the makeup and everything is, is all together. I just have an appreciation for that. And, and maybe I'm old, you know, maybe I'm old school. Uh, I want my girl to be my homie, but not really. You know, don't, I don't want you to be a boy. I want you to be the homie. I want you to be my best friend. I want us to be laughing at shit people don't understand, but it should be a very clear distinction, in my opinion, mm -hmm. between me and you, you know, and our roles. And guess what? I tell this is what I would say, right? As a boss, as an alpha, as a very overly aggressive, ambitious, aggressive man, I tell all my female employees who are all bosses, they work their asses off day and night. And I say these words. As much as y'all are hitting it out of the park every single day, y'all can never do for me what Zelly do for me. Don't ever cross that line. Don't ever think that because you orchestrate my life day and night that I'm you're making my life better. No, you're making my life better, including what my girl is doing to make my life better because all of this energy that I have with her, I wouldn't even attempt or try, nor is it your duty or responsibility to give me any of that energy. But I got so many powerful, multi-ethnic, powerful women around me. I mean, Voltron Entertainment at this point, we're like the UN. I mean, we got every religion, every race, every nationality, every sexuality. We we very proud of the team, and we're we're still the little engine that could. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and say we got 500 employees, but I don't really know. I don't really know of too many people who's got a team that can touch mine. Mm -hmm. I mean, we rock. We get done. Yeah. And I've had people that work with me and for me for 25 years, and they still around. Well, I could tell that you're very loyal. You know, loyalty <sighs> is the big deal for you. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, sometimes loyalty is a gift, other times it's a curse, mm. right? Because for one, I've never, I've, you know, one of the gifts that God has gave me is being able to see the value in people without them name dropping mm. or whatever is in your bank account mm. or you being able to say, let me see my resume. Your resume didn't get you this job. It was, it was how I felt about you instantly that got you the gig. And if I start finding out more about you after, it's a bunch of shit that'll freak me out. But I'll just pray to God that all of these different things that I found out about you, you'll love me enough and care enough about me to not bring any of that energy this way. Mm. But your resume didn't get you here. In most cases, when I work with a producer, I never hear the songs that they produce for other people in order for me to say, come work for me. I, I, when it comes to screenplay writers, producers, executives, directors, I don't got to look at 30, 40 music videos that you directed for me to, you know, process it and get back to you. And it's a vibe. Energy. It's a vibe. Doesn't lie. Because as long as you're talented, you're going to end up doing some shit that you ain't never done in your life anyway. Mm -hmm. So why am I looking at everything that you did before you got it? The game's going to change from today on. Well, speaking of producers, because we've talked relationships, so we got to talk about the album, right? Beautiful Pain. You're single, Lenny Kravitz. You got him doing guitar. You got one of my favorite singers, Leandria Johnson. Mm, praise God. Which I would have never known that she would do an R&B record like that. Mm. But then again, I remember you two and your performance together at the award show, and you sounded amazing. So mm. is that where it came from you was like what made you say oh i gotta get leandria on this so i have to tell you a story because i think it's important um i love telling stories because i think it takes us all back to our childhood right why do we want someone to tell us a story before we go to bed it's like it doesn't matter how old you get tell me a story what happened so uh i love leandria i love leandria in all aspects of who she is her grit, her grind, 
her substance struggles, her being so transparent about going to jail and just things that she's dealt with, I really feel like Leandria Johnson is the Mary J. Blige of the gospel. Mm. She's the phenomenal. reason why I love you and we feel you the way we do is because we know that Jesus didn't just hang out with perfect people. He hung out with the prostitutes, the addicts, the people that's homeless, the people that's suicidal. Jesus is out in the field, in the streets, really trying to work his magic and help each individual person to turn it around. So what if a gospel singer who sounds as amazing as Leandria Johnson, who has announced that she's had substance and alcohol issues over the years, what if Leandria suddenly becomes the most relatable gospel singer mm. that can help more people to stop drinking because she's willing to be transparent about one of her struggles? Mm. See, there's so many people in gospel to me that are painting this perfect picture and they're losing souls. We see that fake hair live. Mm -hmm. We see all that makeup. The men is wearing more makeup than the women. You know, as far as pastors, all of them. See what's going on? Everything has to stay grounded. We have to do whatever it takes to stay tangible and relatable. And the days of us turning a prophet from creating these false narratives and false perceptions and trying to convince people that I'm this when you're really that, people are exhausted with that. Mm -hmm. And I just have an appreciation for Leandria, Pastor John Gray, Aventer Gray, um, just all of the men and women of God that I respect and love personally because of the level of trans, even Kirk Franklin. I just love how transparent oh, sex very, addiction, yeah. this and that. I mean, over the years, you know, the fact that this man has been on for 30 years, I've been on for 25 years. It's like, truth be told, man, who I was 30 years ago ain't got nothing to do with who I am now. But for me to rob our young people and our young generation of the opportunity for, the, for them to know that I was up. I really did struggle. I've been through some things. I was addicted to porn. I was, I used drugs. I drunk. I used to go to strip clubs, whatever, like tell the story. I know where you at now, but tell the story of who you used to be. And also more importantly, give God all the glory pertaining to all that he brought you through. Mm. That's how you bring people more to the kingdom. I don't want to see the fancy custom suit. I don't want to see the shiny building with the 40,000 seats, you know, in the arena and seeing how many people are showing up to hear you preach. I want to hear about the stuff because I'm dealing with the stuff. If I wasn't dealing with the stuff, I wouldn't be in church. All right. We are all imperfect people in very different times and moments and processes in our life. And we are hoping that this man of God who has a much stronger cell phone tower into Jesus could have God to drop something down on him that he verbalizes through his temple and touch my soul to have me to get to the other side of the things that I'm struggling with. So I go back to God as a forgiving God. And I say, yeah, he is. He forgives me. Who am I to not forgive somebody? But I'm still going to do it in my time because I'm allowed to. And I believe when I get to a place that I forgive my ex or anybody who's ever done wrong by me, then when I forgive them, it's going to be real. It's yeah. not going to be me just, you know, I forgive you when I really don't. Because when it's festering and it's all up in there and you lie and say it ain't there no more mm -hmm. and you're still feeling it. Anybody God knows. God knows. I'm not, I don't want to do this album. This beautiful pain album, this album's supposed to be for somebody else. I'm supposed to be still married. I'm supposed to be still going home to my wife and my daughter. Soraya never asked to be born, to be raised in two different homes, separate from mom and dad. That's a life I grew up with. Why would I want that for my kids? You know, that's a lot of people's story, though, especially nowadays. And 
the message, the inspiration that you're going to give somebody from having to go through this personally, they'll be able to listen to you more than they will somebody who has two parents in the home. shared this publicly. One of the hardest things that I had to deal with after she left me, right across from our master bedroom in Atlanta, it's my office. As soon as you open the door, my office is right there. The highlight of my morning, every morning, was hearing my daughter little hard bottom shoes hitting the wood floors. And the door would slide open and she would go, hi, daddy. And I would turn around, Soraya. She took that from me. So, yeah, if people would much rather interview me once I'm perfect, I forgive everybody, I'm healed, and I'm okay. That's that's cool. Maybe I'll stop doing interviews. But right now, no different than Mary J. Blige when she sang from her heart about all of her stuff. Anita Baker, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Al Green, Teddy Pendergrass, Marvin Gaye. Stevie Wonder, the beauty of life is that there's highs and lows. And if you happen to be a painter, meaning a vocalist or an artist in any capacity, and you could take what's inside of you and put it on a canvas, put it in a song, put it in your clothes, your art, just get it out. That's how you change the world. Absolutely. So we're going to be looking forward to Beautiful Pain. When does it drop? Everybody wants to know. What if I told you it may not drop? Wait a minute now. Therese. What you mean by that? It's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I record a song. I can't go to the studio for eight to ten days just to recover. These ain't lyrics. It's my life. This is my, this is my stuff. This shit is real. This ain't for entertainment. This ain't for charts. If y'all thought I cared about the charts, why I haven't dropped in ten years? I don't lose no sleep over who's relevant, who's hot. Who's on the charts? Who you fucking? Who you? What you driving? Man, listen, man. I, I stopped paying attention to what everybody was doing a long time ago. I just do me, man. Insecurities make you lose sleep over what everybody else got and what they doing. I do me, man. I never claimed to be the most famous. I never claimed to sold the most records. Nor have I ever desired that. It takes you to be around a Beyonce to realize you don't want to be Beyonce. Because of all that comes with that level of work ethic, that grind, that hustle, that pressure, that level of isolation from being such a gigantic star. It takes me to be around Vin Diesel to realize I don't want to be Vin Diesel. Mm. It takes you to go get on the mega yacht and enjoy it to then realize, thank God I enjoyed this, but I get to go home. It's all in the perspective. And for the people that want to be Beyonce... I understand, but it's not my desires. I don't want to be the biggest artist in the world with all of the pressure and the responsibilities, the work ethic and the grind that comes with that thing. Am I capable of being one of the biggest movie stars in the world? Getting down to 2% body fat, 
booking more movies than The Rock and everybody else that's considered top tier, I'm very capable of it. I don't want it. I'm very comfortable in my skin doing me, running my race. And I think the, the success of other people inspires me because when someone is very successful, they represent what's possible. But when you know what's possible, it first has to become a choice of yours. And it's not a choice that I've made. So I'm releasing an album that I don't want to release. I'm releasing, I released a song that I never wanted to release. I don't think you ever loved me. Who wants to say that? A lot me. of people do, though. That's the way people feel. Yeah. But they ain't got to release a song about it. Who wants to release a song entitled, I Don't Think You Ever Love Me? Handsome and sexy Tyrese running around here with a woman who didn't want him no more, chucked him away. And now he's got a song called, I Don't Think You Ever Loved Me. Who wants that? You think I want that? I don't. I get it. I get it. And we all go through our, our pain. It's inevitable. Like you said, it's the ebbs and flows of life. Would you be surprised how many people do go through that? I mean, we're in 2023, and I know you don't keep up with that, like you said, but people don't commit anymore. So there's a lot of people saying, I don't think he or she ever loved me. And I mm. think people will relate to that. Well, and I, I think just healing on the other side of that release. Yeah. Well, I think I am healing, but I'm not healed. Maybe it comes after you drop it. Maybe not. We'll see. I think the day I will heal from this is when the album come and go. And I don't hear it on the radio 24 hours, seven days a week and got to do a million concerts singing all these songs because they're hits. It's my story. It's like, uh, so like not God forbid, strike it, strike it. It's like uh, losing a child and writing a song about it. Hmm. How can you push losing your child to the back of your head when you're on stage performing it every day? Yeah, it's a song. Yeah, everybody loved the song. That was my child. It's different. Yeah. So, again, chasing the charts is not a game for me. Um, being relevant, I, I'm completely irrelevant in music. I got, got some hits. I've sold some records. I've done some damage to the game. I got real fans. I got it. But I'm not the biggest and most successful R&B artist out there. And I don't even drop that often for me to be that. But I'm just grateful that I'm still alive and I'm grateful that I still matter in music. Almost definitely. May not be relevant, but I still matter. These days, more people would define me as a movie star over, over a singer. And that's fine, because I do more movies than I sing. But the money that I make from the movies have created the luxury that most of us as artists don't have to be able to say, let me get to the studio to record when I really feel it. So but is your passion still in music, or would you say it's leaned towards acting? My passion is 100%. I don't lose sleep over movie roles. It comes very natural for me. It I, does. I, I rock it. I, I do the best I can. Co-stars, directors, you know, we do a lot of rewrites on scripts. I'm very, very in it. But those ain't my words. Those are yours. These ain't just, these ain't my scenes for my life. That's your life. I'm here, a hired gun. I get paid, put on the clothes, travel co-stars we do our job we do the best we can and we out well why are you there let's talk about fast x mm -hmm. okay because you guys are creeping up on star wars <laughs> they made 12 films right you guys are at 10 how far do you guys plan to take this because how far <laughs> will you go <guys? laughs> uh <clears throat> well and you bring in big numbers. If I can be honest with you, the way I've been this whole time sitting here, um, 
I don't think anybody from the set of Fast 1, 2, 3, whatever it's been, none of us have ever been on the set thinking we're going to still be doing this 20 years from now. We're all, all overwhelmed and humbled and grateful by the fact that these fans and supporters of this franchise just keep showing up. Um, we're not even lucky. We're blessed. I mean, to release Fast 9 at the height of a pandemic, it got pushed like two or three times, and it finally got released. It was like, yo, this is the first time that everybody officially came back outside. And they wasn't willing to go theatrical and streaming because the fans are used to getting the movie a certain kind of way. So I think Vin Diesel has done something very brilliant with the studio, Donna Langley, and all of the executives at Universal because that's way above my pay grade. I think they've done a great job of allowing other huge stars, male and female, to come and play in the sandbox. I think the idea that Jason Momoa has these male and female fans that just love anything he do, he's bringing all them over there. Jason Statham and The Rock at the time, and Charlize Theron and Helen Marion. I mean, it's just, it's, it is such a, beautiful multi-ethnic dance and uh, I think we're all very very grateful that over 20 years now uh, the fans are still showing up so Fast 10 is coming if y'all haven't seen the trailer go watch it right now and the world premiere for Fast 10 is actually in Rome Oh, wow. Roman and Rome. <laughs> let's see what they did there. So, well, let me ask you about the movie. So, let's just say that it's around for another 15 years, 10 years, right? Where, what would you want to see yourself personally? What would you want to see happen in one of the installments? That you're like, we got to address this. Um, we're, we're discussing a couple of things. Um, you know, Roman ain't never had a girlfriend. You ain't never met Roman's family. Um, you don't know if I got brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. You ain't seen me on FaceTime with anybody. It's so much stuff about this world of Roman that, like, where is the backstory? How is this guy just always available for the mission? And, um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we've been having some conversations about that. It's been a few years of it. But I think out of fairness to the rest of the characters, if you're going to give Roman that level of a backstory, then there is a certain responsibility to give everybody a backstory, you know? Who is Tej family? Who is his people? Where is Michelle people? You know, Rodriguez, you know, who is, where is Sun Kang and his family, you know? So... I think once you open up that door, um, you just got to figure out, you know, what to do with that real estate. It's all called real estate. That's what we call it. Mm -hmm. It's real estate. But what do you do with it, you know? Uh, do you do a big family reunion and everybody get to finally get together and meet all each other's family and loved ones and then just get a call, hey. I need you to meet me up. <laughs> We're back on. Mom, I love you. Um, you know, you know, Mom, I got to go. You know, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. but yeah, it's coming. I got to get out of here. I appreciate you. Beautiful pain is coming. Um, I'm going to pray for you. Thank you. And your recent heartbreak. And whoever fault it is, don't matter. You know, just uh, stay focused on every 24 hours. Oh, yeah. I, I love your spirit. I love your vibe, and um, it's not that you would be open or ready for a relationship, but if you're in the presence of someone and there's a vibe there, it's not about sex. It's about going to the spa. It's about sitting across, having that lunch and that dinner, and letting that man flirt and, and enjoy your magic. Yeah. Not everything has to become sexual. I know that you can mislead people 
if they have that on their mind. But you got the power of no. And I think a lot of times when women are single, they rob themselves of the opportunity to let a man enjoy them mm. without sex. You know, if he has all these things in mind for you, he's texting and said, hey, you know, I know you're busy. I would really love to take you to lunch. It's like we're talking about lunch, you know. Um, kids go to lunch every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, they got to they gotta go to lunch every day and sit across with students that they don't get along with at the school. Yeah, I you appreciate know? it. Well, I yeah. mean, I'm happy now. I am in a relationship. Oh, beautiful. I took two years off, and I didn't have sex. I was abstinent. And so... That healing, I think it's done a lot for me. And I'm happy for you because you have moved forward. Mm -hmm. You are in a relationship that you speak very highly of, and that's what it's about. Yeah. It's about getting back up on your feet, not being knocked down. Love will definitely knock you down, but here you are. You got Fast X getting ready to come out. You're winning. 13 movies this year. What a double album. Wow. So that's something to celebrate. A healthy 15-year-old teenager, Shayla. And a four-year-old Soraya, my baby. And in closing, I'm going to tell you some advice that nobody asks for, but I'm going to give it. My pastor and my therapist said, don't let life stop you from living life. all that you feel, all that you're carrying, all that you've seen, all that you've heard, all that you've been exposed to, all of, all of those experiences, they are all very, very real. You may not be telling people about them, but you're thinking about them, you're carrying it, you're processing, you're triggered by it, it's all still there. But do yourself a favor. Invite the Lord Jesus Christ into your most intimate places and spaces. Because he changed my life. And make the decision that you're not going to let life stop you from living life. And don't worry about how fast your homegirl got over him or he got over her and moved on. You run your race. And you'll feel much better about it in the end. Don't tear nobody down because they want to be celibate for two years. And you may have been single for two weeks and you out fucking and partying. Don't judge nobody on either side. Everybody has their process. And I'm in the middle of mine. And I think when it comes to this album, because that's what's on my head right now, I think talking about it for me is a part of my healing. And most of us as men, we get attacked for not being vocal or expressing our feelings or our vulnerabilities. We get attacked. Why you won't just talk? You know, just tell me what you're thinking. You look like you got something on your mind. Talk. You know, I'm here. And they, no, I'm good. I'm good. They don't want to. They don't feel safe. They don't feel comfortable. But as soon as you get a man like me, who is completely open and I'm just purging and getting it all out then I get attacked for doing that. So you, us, us men, we can't win for either side. We get attacked for shutting up and we get attacked for speaking. But I don't give a fuck. I'm going to tell my truth. And you're going to get this work. Beautiful pain is coming soon. Appreciate you. Thank you, Therese.